Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Olivia Ekpene here with Ashley Titians today. Yes. It, very exciting to have you on yes. here as well. So we're super excited. We have a lot to dive in. We had the Chicago Marathon go off this past weekend, which Ashley had a chance to be there live in person. So we're going to do a deep dive on that. Nutty Come and Pre-Nats are also this weekend. So we're going to touch on some of the big storylines there. And also there's a great meet at Texas A&M. And of course, you know, I want to talk about that going into the weekend. So many great things still in the distance side of things, cross country marathon running. But we also, before we get into our special guest of the day, we have to thank our sponsors, Wonderful Pistachios. And if you guys are looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs a real protein punch, Guys, get a crack into a good source of protein with tasty, healthy, wonderful pistachios. Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of the daily value. It's one of the highest protein nuts out there, but that's not all. Pistachios are also known for their fiber and they're better for you unsaturated fats, which may help you keep feeling fuller longer. But actually, that's not the best part about it. Wonderful pistachio comes in a variety of flavors, sizes. We even opened up a bag. Oh, we did. They were yesterday. pretty good. What flavor did we have? It was the, the seasoned salt. Seasoned salt. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend. Yes. It was so good. <laughs> Perfect for enjoying with your colleagues, your family, your friends. And of course, as we are getting into the school year. So make sure you grab a bag of wonderful pistachios to help you fuel up your day. And wonderful pistachios should be uh, should be become now your go-to snack. So check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. So without further ado, like I mentioned, we have a very special guest. Yes, Ashley, who is our special guest yes, for today? Yes, very excited for this today. We have joining us the Tokyo Olympics bronze medalist in the women's marathon, Molly Seidel. Mm -hmm. And you know, throughout her career, she's been, you know, just killing it on the track, on the road racing, in the marathons. She's a three-time NCAA champion from Notre Dame, and she's coming off a 2:23:07 personal best in Chicago. So we're really excited to have Molly Seidel joining us today. Hey, how are hey, you? Guys. Hey, Molly. <laughs> hey, I'm good. It's good. I'm uh, glad to be on. Awesome. awesome. Well, you know, first off, you know, I know we had a chance to speak a little bit in Chicago. I got to see the race, you know, 223.07 PR, you know, mm -hmm. the second fastest American, you know, you placed within the top 10. Just, you know, generally take me through what that race was like for you and, you know, how that executed. Yeah, it, going into Chicago, I feel like a lot of the focus was just on having not been able to race a marathon in the last two years, getting in just a really solid effort, like running healthy and coming away from the race feeling really good. And so to be able to get all those things and also come away with a PR, I think was just such a like, it was such a confidence boost for me and a really nice feeling like I've got some good momentum going into trials um, this February. How are you feeling? Like, to hear like you haven't competed in the marathon distance in two years, I would be, that's the longest race out there, you know what I mean? So it's like, mm -hmm. how are you feeling mentally just going into the Chicago Marathon, just knowing that it's been some time since you've competed at that distance? Mm -hmm. I think there were definitely a lot of nerves because I feel like the marathon specifically is a very like mental race. Like you spend so much time in your head and it is just a, it's not like a track 5k where you're going so hard the whole time that you don't really need to think. It's the kind of thing where it's like, okay, you know that you're going to hit that point in the race, that it gets really difficult, that you're going to have to really push through. And I think before the race, I kind of doubted. I'm like, man, like I haven't been in that headspace for such a long time. The training's been going well, but nothing can mimic getting to mile 23 of a marathon. <laughs> and I think it, I, I think it did take actually getting into the race again and just being like, oh my God, this is so much fun. So many people are out cheering. Like, yes, it's definitely hard and it's hard going out in my first race in two years, faster than I've ever gone out in a marathon. That was kind of the focus of like our goal is be like, okay, we just need to rip that bandaid off and to still have such a good time. Like it, 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 I think it was just that reminder of just like, yeah, like I'm, I'm pretty good at this and I really enjoy doing it. And it's just fun being back. That's awesome. You know, mm -hmm. also too, this was your first Chicago marathon, I believe. And like, as you mentioned, like it's a, you know, compared to another marathon course, like, you know, New York City, like Chicago's flat, it's fast. You know, the weather was very optimal. You know, take me through what that experience on that course was like for you. Yeah, 
the course was amazing. Like I've done so many races in my career have been either on really difficult courses or in really difficult conditions and a lot of very tactical, like championship style races. So to do a paced flat fast marathon was, that was honestly something I was pretty nervous about because it's so outside my normal wheelhouse. And honestly, it's the kind of thing I'm like, man, I really want to go back to Chicago. This was really nice. It's, it's pretty cool when they can like control a lot of those variables and it really lets us kind of like, see what our potential is at, as athletes, just as like top speed. It feels like a time trial almost. Mm -hmm. I know you briefly kind of mentioned this, just thinking about mentally staying engaged for 26 miles. As you talked about 5K, you don't really think about, but like now, you know, I'm thinking as I was telling you off air, like I'm training for my, well, not training anymore. It's officially here, like my half marathon <laughs> Sunday. And I'm like, how do I stay engaged just mentally? Mm -hmm. What are some key cues that maybe you tell yourself as you're going through these longer distances just to help you keep going? Yeah, I think a big thing for me, especially as I get into the middle part of the marathon, I find that for me, miles like 14 through 18 are typically some of the hardest because it's that middle zone you still have a really long way, like you still have around 10 miles to go, but you're getting tired and you feel that mental lag. I feel like a big part for me, one, I, a lot of kudos to my pacer, Rory Linklater, who's a friend of mine and a fellow Puma athlete, that he was in charge of pacing me. So I didn't need to think about splits at all, that he was just knocking them off just like that. Um, but then also being able to kind of cultivate this sense of like just focus and almost like um uh, it sounds weird but like a, a stillness in your head because there's so many people cheering and you need to really stay focused on what you need to do and not get the attention drawn away by everything that's going on around you so I feel like I'll just kind of move through different things and be like okay how is my body moving how is my breathing when's the next bottle almost like um it feels sometimes like I'm driving like a race car and I just need to keep all like the check engine lights just like, okay, like keep making sure that everything is good and that it doesn't let my mind drift too much. Mm, also that. caffeine. Caffeine helps. Caffeine's key. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, all runners, they live by caffeine. Um, yeah. yeah. I know afterwards you said, I think I asked you like what your, your plans were to go celebrate the marathon and you said you were going to go do karaoke. <laughs> did you actually yeah. go do karaoke? Yes, I need to know. We, need we, story. we did do karaoke. We can send you guys some videos. It was oh actually God. incredible. We went to, it's called Brando's Speakeasy. So it actually was like right down there in the loop. And when we got there, it was dead. There was literally <laughs> nobody there, but there's a karaoke stage and we like convinced the guy at the bar. We're like, can we please just do karaoke tonight? And there was a huge contingent of, um, Colombian marathoners just like regular marathoners who had raced that came in and then they started getting into it and oh, awesome. we had probably like 15 people in our group and it was like it was absolutely wild it was so much fun oh that's so fun that's so fun mm -hmm. you celebrated with a hot dog yeah I did I did oh nice I but I didn't run so very true very true <laughs> hey, honestly you guys have the hard job we just have to work to like two and a half hours you guys have to do all the stuff on the back end oh man well either way it's fun either way running or yeah. covering it it's fun either way yeah um you know also to looking back briefly want to touch on you know where you are at this point in your career you know obviously um you know, you were the Tokyo bronze medalist in the marathon, and now you're at this new point, I feel like, in your career, and you have a lot of this momentum, too, building up to the Olympic trials. So maybe mm -hmm. what do you think you learned most from the Chicago Marathon and how you hope to carry mm -hmm. that, you know, through, you know, from this point forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like it does very much feel like this is kind of a new chapter in the marathoning, just having spent so much time over the last two years really making sure that my mental and physical health is in order. And things that I, like, those are things that I've struggled with my entire running career. And Chicago really felt like, even outside of like a good race result, it was such a positive experience because it was the first time in such a long time that I felt like I really entered it doing all the things right and doing the things right for my body, for my head, and finishing that race and being like, man, I am excited to go. I don't feel drained like I normally do after a marathon. I feel just really pumped up and feel like I can see all the things that I'm like excited to work on the weaknesses that I can identify that I'm like I need to do this 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 and this and so I think it's this very exciting time because I'm still relatively young in my marathoning career and feeling like man like it was like it's really cool to have gotten a bronze medal at the previous Olympics and be like man like I feel like I've got so much more potential than just that and like 
I, like, I feel like I'm only just finally kind of getting into like, yeah, like I'm firing on all cylinders and there's things to work on. There's always going to be, but it's an exciting time. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. after you getting as the, the rest that you need, I know you were saying like you weren't that sore. <laughs> like yeah. I would have been absolutely sore. Just kind of looking ahead as we prepare for this upcoming Olympics, are there certain milestones that you are striving for are there maybe any half marathons on the horizon that you're kind mm-hmm. of just like eyeballing what does I guess the next few months kind of look like for you yeah so we're gonna try to get in a really solid half marathon probably sometime in December maybe especially with my teammate Jessa Hansen is also going to be running the trials with me and so we really want to try to get her under 70 for the half um, and so something like that where it's fun to be able to like know that okay I've got to do this prep race but it's fun like being able to take it outside of just me and be like okay this is a team thing now um, and then yeah honestly it really is going to be head down and focus on working on some of these weaknesses getting in the longer tempos getting in that strength work that I need to not like fall off the pace in the latter portion of the marathon because it like the marathon is only getting faster, only getting more competitive. And I think like to keep like to keep being competitive on the world stage, U S marathoning has got to up its game. And so, yeah, it's just figuring out creative, fun ways to, to do that and go into trials, feeling, feeling good, feeling happy, feeling ready. How are you preparing for that Orlando humidity and stuff like that for <laughs> Olympic trials? I feel like that's okay. A this big, this like, is gonna be wow. This is gonna be such an unpopular opinion, uh, but like I don't know why everyone's complaining about it. like that's the thing. It's like. Paris is going to be hot. Like, yeah. w- like we should expect Orlando to be hot. I do enjoy running in the heat. So we even in this build, like with the potential that um, uh, that Chicago was going to be very hot. Obviously, we saw it in Twin Cities the week before getting yeah. canceled. But we were doing like honestly, I just wear a lot of layers. Like that, it really is not that simple. I'll sauna every <laughs> once in a while, but like legitimately, yeah. just layers and layers and layers of cotton. Like that's just what I did before Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Like. It's really not complicated, guys. Like that's when I see everyone freaking out. Like it could be the hottest Olympic trials ever. It's like they said the same thing about Atlanta too. Like it also could frost in Orlando too. And if it's hot, we deal with it. Like I'll just we'll go down to Phoenix every once in a while. I'll wear three cotton t-shirts. Whatever. We'll (laughs) we'll attack it. I feel like the Kenyans and the Ethiopians don't complain about this kind of stuff. And it's like (laughs) we are prima donnas here in the U.S. So I guess that's the key lives where yes. multiple cotton t-shirts to train for. That days. that was actually a Dina Castor tip that I oh, got right. early okay, on. Because nice. she trained for Athens just wearing yeah. a lot of cotton. And so I did that before Tokyo. Of just like, okay, long runs, even if it's warm out, just wear cotton. I mean, she might have to Dina, do that. I was going to say, if Dina Castor is telling you to do that, then that's got to be something, yeah. right? Right? <laughs> yeah, it's the original performance fabric. <laughs> <laughs> I just love your mindset because, like I mentioned, we're in Austin and, like, the humidity and the heat that we've had over the last several months, and we're out there running at 6, 6.30 in the morning, I'm like, goodness gracious, it's just blazing hot out here. Oh, yeah. So oh, cotton, yeah. I mean, cotton is the key. You guys, you guys have next level down in Texas, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll actually do, like, we come up in the summer, because Wisconsin, obviously different level, but we'll it'll get very hot and humid up here. And so we did our, like, quote unquote prep camp before Tokyo here in Wisconsin, which was me just like trying to like warrant getting to come home for the 4th of July before the like Olympics. And yeah, it was gnarly, but it prepared me well for Tokyo. There you go. That's right. Awesome. Well, Molly, thank you so much for joining us today. So grateful to have you on here on the flow track podcast. And we're wishing you all the best as you prepare for the Olympics and also with uh, trials coming up for you very soon. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you. What a great opportunity to ch- chat with Molly. I thought I that was really that great. Was great. And also you the fact you had the opportunity to, you know, have that one on one time with her as well during the Yeah, it was so great stuff. to, you know, just chat with her before and after the race too. You know, I think uh, <laughs> I remember we were talking like before and after like when I talked with her, she's like, Oh, you're, we have the curl we're the curly hair twins. <laughs> so we have a little connection there. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, outside of Molly's fantastic